right. All right. Um, so thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, welcome to our alumni engagement web series for the 2022-2023 um, academic year organized by the Morris Office of Sustainability. My name is Maddie Schoenberger, and I'll be your host. Um, I'm a third year biology major, and this year I'm working as an intern um, doing communications work with the Office of Sustainability. So today we have the pleasure of connecting with a few of our Morris alums um, who are pursuing public sector sustainability careers. Uh, we have with us today Marcus Groves, Chris Drosky, and Sid Bauer. Um, so we'll have we'll start by having you introduce yourselves. Um, so will you please say your name and pronouns if you're comfortable, your graduation year, and your current job position. So we'll start with Marcus, the oldest. Yeah, great. So my name is Marcus, pronouns he, him. I graduated in 2009, and uh, my current position was last part, right? I'm the director of an office called the Office of Enterprise Sustainability, and our role at the state uh, is to uh, sort of uh, guide and track and direct the sustainability as it relates to the operations of state government. So we've got, I don't know if you know this, there's 23 cabinet level agencies plus the Met Council that we watch. There's another 200 plus boards um, that we can't, we don't have the capacity to keep track of, but we consume about 21 million gallons of fuel every year. We have 3,500 buildings. And uh, so that's my world. Awesome. All right, and we'll go to Chris next. Hey there, I'm Chris Drosky. Um, I graduated from Morris in 2011, and I'm currently the energy manager for the city of Minneapolis. So um, I primarily deal with enterprise operations, focusing on how we get the city to reduce our energy consumption and focus on our renewable energy goals. But I also interface a lot with our sustainability department and look at how we can uh, achieve the city's greater community goals as well for energy efficiency and renewable energy. Great. I'm next. Uh, my name is Sid Bauer. I use she, they pronouns. I graduated from Morris in 2019. I always tell people I never had any COVID school, got out just in time. Um, and currently I have two job positions, both of them uh, for the government. I work for the city as a driver for the Morris Transit. So I scoop people around town all day long. If you need a ride tomorrow, I'll be on the bus. And when I'm not in the bus, I'm doing my work for the county. Uh, and there I coordinate and kind of am the person behind starting up our organics recycling program countywide. So I'm herding cats in a way and collecting friends who want to think about trash a little bit more and getting them on board with the county program, so. Awesome. Well, thank you all for introducing yourselves and thank you for being here with us today. Uh, we know you have busy schedules, so it means a lot that you're able to um, spend some time with us talking with our current Morris students. Um, so without further ado, we'll jump into our conversation. Um, so we've invited you all here to chat today um, because your careers involve sustainability, but um, we're wondering if you always knew what you wanted to do. Um, a lot of undergraduate students feel um, overwhelmed about choosing a major. So we're wondering how you did it and if you have any words of wisdom to share with current Morris students. Yeah, uh, choosing a major. How did I choose a major? Um, you know, I was not planning to go to college at all. Um, and then all my friends were going to college and I was like, oh, maybe I'll go to college too. I probably should have had more thought about it than that. <laughs> and then and then I applied to a few schools. What I was really interested in was forestry and I applied to or natural resource management. I applied to a few schools. And uh, to be to be completely honest, Morris offered me the best deal, right? The best bang for my buck. And uh, it was a great place for me. Uh, my advisor um, was patient in um, letting me figure it out. I'm not sure what I even thought my major was when I started. Um, I ended up with uh, an environmental science or environmental studies major, but 
I, I don't even remember what it was going to be before that, but I do re remember at a certain point when that major came out, I needed one more class and so, <laughs> to get it. So I took that class and here I am. I was always really interested in economics and um, the sciences generally. And so, yeah. Awesome. All right, and we'll hear from Chris next. Thanks. Um, regarding my major, I, I think when I came into school, I had an idea that I wanted to do something technical, but didn't know exactly what that was. Um, my dad was an organic chemistry professor, and he suggested try to get started in the physical science path, even if that's not what you find yourself doing in the, in, in the long term. Um, because if you wait a year or two to start taking some of those fundamental courses, you might have to do a five, a fifth or a sixth year to graduate. Um, so when I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do, um, I basically just declared chemistry because I took some math courses and I was like, eh, they're fine, but I can't see myself loving this and um, took to several biology courses, things like that. But what I really loved about chemistry was um, the hands-on activities, you know, organic chemistry was some of my favorite courses, putting things together, doing some research, things like that. And I just got very heavily involved in a lot of areas. I, I did music courses. I took some political science courses. So somewhat chemistry, somewhat undeclared, but um, I, I stuck with chemistry throughout. That's what I graduated with. And um, throughout my time, I got more involved in environmental courses. I basically you would call it environmental science minor I had on the side. It wasn't officially a, a developed program at that point, but I took a lot of environmental courses. And then I'd say my biggest uh, in involvement was being part of the Green Corps, which really shaped where I would put my uh, career trajectory. So junior and senior year at the Morris campus, I was part-time Green Corps uh, as the energy conservation specialist. And that's where my career kind of went from being a lab chemist into doing more sustainable work. Nice. Very interdisciplinary. We like that at Morris. All right, and Sid. Yeah, um, when I came up to college, I was undecided. I did that intentionally. I've always been a very go with the flow kind of person. If the world says do this, I say, sure. If the world says don't do that, I say, okay. Um, so I came in kind of expecting to make friends, right? I came to school with the intent of meeting people and learning about myself, and that's what I did. When I was in high school, I took AP biology, and that's the one class I remember as kind of invigorating my academic need. I was like, oh, we're learning about systems and how we work and how the world works. And it was thrilling, right? It was thrilling that it was teaching me how we work. And it was also thrilling that I understood it, right? I felt empowered in learning that stuff. So when I came to Morris and I started taking classes, my intro to biology class, once again, did that same thing, right? We kind of learned all the same stuff that we had already learned in AP bio. And I felt empowered. I said, I can learn about this. I can talk about systems. And so I declared biology, I think when I was a sophomore. Um, before I even declared my biology major, I was an office of sustainability intern. That was, I'm pretty sure spring semester of my freshman year. And so right off the bat, I've been hanging out with Troy from the beginning. <laughs> um, and I guess Going back to the, do I know what I always wanted to do? The answer is no. Like I said, I'm flowing back and forth with what, what the world says. So I think really my academic decisions were just kind of like, this would work, right? And I also like to point out that when I declared my biology major, it was never meant to be, uh, I am doing the research, I am doing the hard science. It was very tied to education, right? I wanted to be a biology major and then teach high school and middle school sciences. I wanted to be around the people and be around the education and be around the growing. Um, and the thing is, is once you get out of school, you learn that there are other places to learn and to grow, right? So coming out of high school, you say, this is all I've known. This is what I'm going to do. I think Morris really opened me up to thinking about all of the different people, even just on campus, right, who are doing different jobs and who went to school for those different jobs and different people who didn't go to school and are doing those jobs. So mm -hmm. I don't know what I want to do. I don't think I need to know what I want to do. And I think Morris gave me some flexibility in how I view work and self and community and how those all intermingle into a, a joyous, happy time. Yeah. Great. Um, 
So then kind of related to your time at Morris, um, we're wondering if you did any research while you were on campus or if you held any internships or jobs um, or extracurriculars, things you did outside of school slash work, things that you did for fun, and also if you had any favorite places on or near campus. Uh, that's, that's a good question. I've got to dig deep, but, uh, but um, my co-panelist answers to the last one reminded me of things that like, uh, I realized I wasn't good at chemistry after <laughs> I took Nancy's O-Chem for one per semester. I was like, this is the lab situation. I am not good at it. I don't know how to leave <laughs> re-lab instructions, not where I'm going to be successful. Uh, and that's okay. You know, like that was okay with me and it's been okay for my career. I know there's a lot of people that are a lot better than me at a lot of stuff and that's okay because I'm good at different stuff too. So um, what did I do for, uh, what did I do? So I had several jobs. I worked for the ambulance, uh, Stevens County Ambulance Service. I worked for a farmer down at Hancock or just outside of Hancock. So I'd go work the ambulance service, like, you know, like, uh, I don't know, four or five shift, four shifts a week. And then the weekends and I'd work Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh, down in Hancock. And I also had an internship up in Hoffman and, um, I think the like what was interesting to me is the internship up in Hoffman that I had my last year at Morris was probably, you know, what sent me in the direction I ended up oddly, um, because it was working with Muriel. I don't know up at the Economic Development Authority, and and it was just uh, I learned a lot. I think one of the things that I learned a lot uh, learned about is you know community, and you have to do work to make community. For there to be community, for communities to thrive, it takes work and intentionality, and you have to put the time in and you have to invest in it. Uh, and that's shaped what I'd done after Morris, for sure. And uh, what did I do for fun? I did not have a lot of time for fun, <laughs> to be fair. Um, yeah, I don't know that I did. And uh, what else? Where are some of my favorite places, I guess? I mean, I went to all the usual places, right? I don't think I need to name them. I went to all the usual haunts. <laughs> all right. Yeah, for me, um, sophomore year, I was a, a TA for uh, general chemistry. Um, and then one of the biggest things I'd advocate for students is to, to spend, spend a summer in Morris, you know, and I will say that um, yeah. I, I think a lot of people don't do themselves a service by, by leaving and going home every summer. And I spent, besides my freshman year, every summer there. So sophomore year, I did an internship uh, with the Board of Water and Soil Resources. I got involved in that with Pete Wyckoff from Environmental Biology. So that was great. I mean, I didn't do a lot of biology work in the past, but just, you know, would trudge through wetlands and then do GIS mapping of all these things. And I, I learned a lot of different species, you know, big blue stem, a few others, uh, all the native grasses out in that territory. So that was cool. Um, and then going into my, my junior year, that's where I got involved in the Minnesota Green Corps. So Troy had let me know about this new awesome thing going on at the Morris campus. They were going to be a host site. And um, I read a little bit more about it and there was four different positions and there was one available with energy conservation work. So I applied into the program and got accepted and did not only one, but two years on the program. And it, it, it was an awesome program. Uh, you'd work, I think it was like 10 or 15 hours a week during the school year. And then you'd work full-time during the summer. And we did a lot of different, uh, different activities. We did um, a UMAX campus energy challenge with that program where we would compete against Duluth and a few others that were part of it, went to some fun conferences. Um, so I, I would really advocate for, for any students to really find internship opportunities when you're at campus. Professors will for sure assist you with finding them. And that's a great way to help not only gain, um, you know, some of the networking ability and, and opportunities outside um, for when you're graduating, but just help boost your resume. You know, you, you can get a job right after college, having some, um, some clear experience in your field. In, in terms of extracurriculars, 
I loved getting involved in a lot of things. I, I hosted a radio show on campus. I enjoyed that. Um, I started the intramural floor hockey league. Uh, I have no idea if it's still going, but we had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> um, I was in Taekwondo in, in, uh, in, in the band and the orchestra on campus. So I like to get heavily involved. And then I played on the, the men's tennis team too. So that was one of my favorite things about Morris is being able to not only do academics, but be able to just do whatever activities you like. Um, and then during summertime, spent a lot of time at Pomme de Terre doing disc golf and, and just hang out with friends there. Favorite places, Pomme de Terre Park, you know, doing some canoeing, other things down the river and uh, Don's Cafe. Whenever I can get one of those grilled cheese sandwiches, I'm very happy. My sister occasionally is passing through town. I make her buy a loaf of bread for me and I make up <laughs> grilled cheeses up in the city. <laughs> That's the way to do it. That's pro strats right there. Absolutely. I'd go every, every Thursday morning, I'd go to Don's Cafe. I remember that. <laughs> well, I um, kind of want, I want to piggyback off of what both of you have said, because Marcus was talking about intentionality behind creating community. And that's very important to me. And then Chris was talking about being in doing everything, doing it all um, and enjoying doing it all. And so when I came to Morris, I was a theater kid. I did tech. I lived in Pine. I was doing the theater kid routine of being undeclared, having fun behind the scenes, walking 10 feet between the HFA and Pine, living the dream. I wanted to create some community surrounding fun, right? That's kind of what my Morris experience I've defined it as, is I wanted to create fun. And so that's what I did. So first or second year, we started the meme team and it was just me and friends talking about memes and doing funny stuff that was funny. We held the pacer test one year and I convinced the track captains to get their teams to run the pacer test for practice that day. We hosted uh, 420 mom spaghetti dinner where people brought different containers to our house and we made 20 pounds of spaghetti, like dry spaghetti, 20 pounds of it. Um, put some tomato sauce in a bunch of crock pots we got from, you know, the listserv. And we said, bring, bring a weird container and come eat some spaghetti. And people did. And it was the weekend of dance ensemble and the dancers showed up, right? Like we were creating fun. That was what we wanted to do. Um, I was on the croquet club and we just play croquet. We'd go up to the horticulture gardens or we'd go to the mall for on Halloween and dress up in our costumes. And we'd, we'd play croquet, you know, we were outside. Um, I want to highlight the summer in Morris thing. That's a big deal. Staying here in this community and building this community. Um, is important. I went home for winter break freshman year and I I have not moved back to my parents' house. I have lived in Morris ever since um, January of 2016. So uh, summer in Morris kind of stuck around for me. Um, some other fun things. I was a orientation group leader. I think they're called welcome group leaders now. They're called Wiggles. I also had a KUMM show, a couple different ones throughout the years. Our, our current KUMM station manager is here. Um, so that's exciting. Oh, no, you're not. Oh, never mind. No. I'm the program not. director. Okay. <laughs> a KUMM enjoyer, appreciator is here. Um, we, what else did we do? I was a pal for a couple of years. I wrote for the UR, right? The point of Morris is that there's things, there's students creating the fun that they enjoy. And if you too want to hop on that fun, you can, right? And if the the fun you want to do is not there, you can go to the Office of Student Activities and say, I would like to create the meme team, give me multiple hundred dollars to host a spaghetti dinner. And they will say, sure, and give you multiple hundred dollars to have people over your house for spaghetti, right? That's part of Morris's joy is that you can curate the fun and the extracurriculars that appeal to you. And if they continue, fantastic. If floor hockey is still around, amazing. If not, uh, those of us in 2011 playing floor hockey, we had a good time, right? That's the point of Morris is we're creating the space and then appreciating it while it lasts. Um, and so I had lots of fun. A couple of places, we went up to the gardens a lot when I was a student. Um, there's a park over on West Side that's got this big metal bug that's made out of like a propane tank and some pipes. Um, clearly just some homemade playground equipment. We call it bug park, we go there. Um, where else did I go when I was in Morris? We spent a lot of time just at our rental houses, right? Just with friends, once again, creating that community, um, drinking beers on the roof and watching the train, you know, experiencing the Morris life. Um, that's the joy of it. It's that's nothing too profound. It's 
what you make of it and that's pretty good <laughs> yeah I think that in itself is pretty profound um so thank you for sharing about your experiences it's really fun to hear about what what past students have done on campus and it's inspiring um yeah so now that we've talked about your experience at Morris a little bit, let's dive into post-grad life. Um, so next, we'll talk about what you did after you graduated from Morris. Um, did you pursue any education after your bachelor's degree? Did you enter the workforce? Did you do something else? Um, and how did you decide what you wanted to do? Or um, how did you find opportunities after graduation? Yeah. Uh, so after Morris, I went to the U of M Twin Cities Humphrey School of Public Affairs. It was still called the Institute of Public Affairs then. And they uh, and I got a master's in urban and regional planning. And I, you know, I did Morris. I did my undergrad in three years. And I thought to myself, like, well, it'd be a real shame to short circuit myself on time in right like I'd worked a lot did a lot of credits got out of there early and I was like I sort of shorted myself on this I didn't enjoy it very as much as I should have right which is to say if you're thinking about graduating early maybe don't that's that's real um because you I mean you have plenty of years to work really unless you have to work right um, so I went to the Humphrey School of Public Affairs. I was like, okay, so what am I going to do next? Well, I really was like torn between do I go get a master's in natural resource management or something like this? And I decided urban regional planning. And I came to the conclusion, like, if I want to advance, you know, uh, improved environmental outcomes in this world, there's plenty of people who are technically very smart already and can manage resources, right? If you went to those nat those natural resource managers, they could tell you how to do it right, but that's not how decisions get made, right? Like about resource management is a policy question. It's a question about like humans and society. Um, and so I went and got this degree in urban and regional planning, and I focused on environmental planning and then econ um, economic and workforce development. And those were good years, uh, two good years for me. I did come back though in the summer between those two years, which was weird, and did an internship with West Central Environmental Consultants. Um, and it was uh, it was really good. I learned a lot. I found Morris prepared me well, obviously, um, much more rigorous than my master's program was. And um, there's other Morris grads there um so that community sticks around but i really wanted to focus on this like how do we bring people together to advance these things and um so and i still find myself you know connected to that community and this morris community they sort of blur together sometimes and i don't know if i answered your question now how far in the future are we supposed to go i mean I think that's good. After you've yeah. like, we'll get into like more. Yeah. Where are yeah. You know? Yeah. So I think Morris was really good in the sense that it prepared me for thinking uh, about the, you know, just complexities of society and engaging with people in constructive ways. So, yeah, I really like that. That's one thing that I'm learning is that um, a big part of sustainability is the relationship building piece. Right. We talk a lot of, about a lot that a lot in the Office of Sustainability. Awesome. So we'll move on to Chris next. Yeah. And as I was graduating Morris and trying to figure out the next steps, it, it was, I really had a fork in the road of trying to figure out what to do. I, I was doing undergraduate research with Ted Pappenfuss. And I think I would have, I, I could have succeeded in a path of going to, you know, grad school at the time, looking at maybe a PhD route for chemistry, but there's also this green core program going on with energy work. And I knew that you know, sustainability and, and energy was becoming a, more of a hot topic and, and the areas to focus in on. So um, at, to, to date, I haven't pursued a, a, a master's or a PhD beyond my Morris uh, bachelor's degree, but it served me really well. And I, I sort of followed my gut at the time um, and made some connections through the Green Corps and, and a colleague of mine that was in there with me for one year went 
uh, to work for a company called Franklin Energy, and they do um, energy and efficiency consulting and demand side management. And I took a leap of faith. I mean, Marcus and I both graduated at terrible times for oh, the yeah. economy. <laughs> I should have said there were no jobs <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I didn't really have much of a choice. <laughs> so um, I- ironic as it was with how bad the economy was, I took a job in Michigan and everyone there was really mad at me because they're like, there's no jobs in Michigan. How are you moving from Minnesota to Michigan for this job? But I, I worked there uh, for about nine months and then uh, there was an opportunity to transfer back to Minnesota. And I, I, I missed being here. You know, I, my, my siblings live in, in the Twin Cities area and it, it's just great to get back. Um, so, and then after that, just continued to work doing efficiency work with um, Franklin Energy, working with all utilities throughout the state of Minnesota. And over time, that's brought me back to Morris several times, you know, and and even about two years ago, I was doing the audits for, you know, the Morris Library, the community center in town, um, things like that, because everyone just seems to have a way to boomerang back to Morris. So even through career choices, I, I, I still got back to that territory and areas. So that was a lot of fun. That's great. Um, I want to note that if I look out my front window, I see the West Central Environmental uh, Building. It's right there. Um, so it, everything's, you know, it's Morris. We're all connected. Um, my, I still consider myself in my post-grad life, right? I also graduated at a confusing time. Um, 2019, I graduated my plan intentionally. And this is from back when I was in school, when I decided, no, I don't want to be a biology teacher. I probably want to do some sustainability things. That was probably my junior year. I was actually right after I went on the Germany trip. I was like, no, I don't want to be a teacher. I'd rather do this kind of stuff. Um, And I decided I wasn't going to go down the education track. I still kind of completed all of my requirements. All I need to do is take physics. And I could technically still go through the education program. Um, But I told myself, nope, we're not going to be a teacher when we're 22. That's not the plan. We're going to chill. And so that's what I did. It's 2019. I graduated. I've been driving the bus at that point. I started that my junior year. So I was driving the transit that summer, right? Just hanging out around town, not having homework, knowing that I wasn't going to have homework in the fall, um, driving the bus. I got a dog that August, right? I was living the dream. Had my dog, had my bus, not having homework, living the life. I was helping coordinate a group in town uh, called the West Central Minnesota Climate Network. We were planning a big event um, in the spring, a waste program to talk about waste in our county. And so all these really beautiful, lovely community growth things were happening for me, right? I was chilling, I had a dog, I was building community around sustainability, uh, and then the pandemic hit, right? And so it said, ha ha, do not have any of this community, separate yourselves, everybody back off. And so that was really still, obviously deeply affecting me. This is still going on, right? Um, So my post-grad life is already a time when you're kind of lonely and confused. You're getting out of this system that you've been in your entire life, right? The education, it just, these are the things you do and you, the pattern is there and the roles are there. And once you leave, it's either expected that you make a decision on what you want to do, or you kind of, you just are, right? And so I was just aring, and then there was a pandemic. And so I continued to do that. I continue to just drive the bus and hang out with my dog. And it's been a very good way to survive a global pandemic as well as kind of settle into a new life, right? I'm not a student. I'm not surrounded by hundreds of people any, every day anymore. My life doesn't revolve around the activities that I'm a part of and the academics that I'm doing, right? My life revolves around more scattered, um, less. it feels less tangible, right? Um, And only, not this last summer, but the summer of 2021, did the position open up through the county to do organics recycling. So I feel like I'm kind of phasing, slowly phasing out of my post-grad life into my life that's just just regular. Maybe there's no post-grad attached to it, you know? Um, But for me, that post-grad life has really been an emotional one. It's less about working. It's less about... um, career goals and where I want to be. And it's more about the world is very intense right now. Um, So how can I be where I am and still feel that joy and that connection and that community that drives me? Um, And I definitely did not figure that out right away, right? Everything shut down and 
post-grad. Now I'm 23 and all my friends are different places and I don't have an established community that I'm allowed to go to physically, much less even just be around, right? Um, it was a confusing time. So I'm slowly shifting out of this. And so I'd love to know more about what's after being separated from community through school, through COVID, through the worldwide existence, right? We're back and forth and back and forth. And I, yeah, I particularly feel that my post-grad experience has been an emotional self one as opposed to a what's, where am I going to work? Uh, what do I want to do? It's back to that flowing, right? That where will the world lead me? If the world says, just chill here with your dog and drive the bus and think about trash, fantastic, right? Like that's what I'm up to. So post-grad, I'm still in it. I think I'm, tur I'm turning 26 in a couple months. So then it's kind of like, yo, not 25. Wow. Big deal. Um, so maybe we'll kind of, we'll be shifting, check in in a few years and we'll know what my <laughs> end defined post-grad life is like. Sounds good. Well, it's great to hear about the paths that um, you have all taken after college, because there are so many different directions to go in, and obviously all of them can lead to amazing futures and careers. Um, so in that spirit, we'll move on to the question of where are they now? Um, so what are you working on currently? And could you describe your position and what you do? And maybe, you know, do you enjoy the work you do? Yeah, great. <laughs> well, I'll just share. I uh, am now, uh, so I work in this office where, and I said this, we have this amazing sustainability initiative at the state of Minnesota as it relates to our own agencies and our operations. And people don't think about this, but it's a really big operation where you we're depending on how many employees the Mayo Clinic has at any given time, we're either the first or second largest single employer in the state, the largest real estate in terms of uh, building square footage um, holder in the state and um, probably also the largest real estate holder in general um, because of the forest lands. But um, so I feel incredibly fortunate to be in this office where we have this great comprehensive sustainability initiative in energy and waste and water and greenhouse gas emissions and all these things. And I get excited to go to work, which is great. Uh, it can be really tiring uh, and we all have to lean in on each other. But I also have been here for five years and have really been able to shape a lot of it from its start. And so I've enjoyed, um, you know, onboarding new sustainability coordinators, people that had no experience with sustainability work whatsoever, or, or some people that had and kind of, um, you know, helping them learn and grow and create cohorts. I like when, when I bring people, when, when I onboard people, I onboard them in cohorts, like five or six people at a time. And so they, which is, I don't know about this community building or something. So, well, partly, partly. So it's, they're not calling me with all their questions. They call each other, but um, then they, but I hope that it creates this community and sense of a place to be and friends and uh, at work and colleagues, they can support each other. And I think um, because turnover is a real thing um, when you start working, which you maybe, you know, wherever you all end up, you know, people turnover can be really tough. And so one of the things I think about is how do we make a place where people want to stay? Um, and sustainability is part of that. We get calls or I get emails all the time about, I didn't know the state was doing this. It makes me feel really good that my employer is doing this. And so um, I think that's very rewarding for me. Uh, I had a, a a route to get here though. I, I graduated with this master's in urban regional planning. It was 2011. There's still no jobs. I'm scraping together whatever I can to pay my bills, eating a lot of frozen vegetables and rice. And, um, and I got this interview for a job in Bemidji as a regional planner. And I went up to Bemidji for three years and I did a lot of regional planning work. Um, around hazard mitigation and forestry and biomass and all this stuff and it um, really shaped how I work. I had an amazing mentor 
Uh, my interview was eight hours long, and then I had a four-hour follow-up interview. They were very intentional about hiring, and that was a really big piece, you know, learning about this intentionality. And um, it shaped how I work a lot, and that's been very useful my entire career. Um, I left there, though, because I got a job. I went back to the U to coordinate a research project for a couple of years, where I learned once again academia is probably not the place for me. Um, but then, uh, and then I was like, uh, you know, out there in the world, not knowing what to do. And I was on a not employed again, but I got this um, awesome opportunity at the state and I feel really fortunate. And it's um, been incredibly rewarding. And um, if it's not about putting up numbers, that about our GHG emission reduction, um, it's the, you know, people that makes it rewarding. So um so, so for me i've been in my current title for about a year and a half as the energy manager for the city of minneapolis um wasn't a position i was you know super targeting but when opportunities arise you have to you know take action and generally a lot of people in these roles they they take them and then they retire from them and so when that opportunity uh, op opened up. I put my my name in the ring, um, and and I it, it turned out to be a, a fantastic opportunity to advance my my career. And, and one thing I also am really excited about is just being able to go back to an office. You know, through the pandemic, um, my my former employer we went 100% remote, and that was a decision to go 100% remote permanently. Um, and I really thrive on face to face interactions, things like that. I'm it's exciting. I like that people are on camera here, right? We're able to, you know, interact and see people. And so with, with my position, it, it's been a big change from what I did historically. You know, I was always in a consultant role, you know, helping others, you know, advance their energy efficiency goals, help them save um, on costs. But then having a, a new position where I had ownership in that, you know, instead of telling people what to do, I had to make that action and those changes for, for the city. And I think, um, after being in Green Corps for a while, I, I really liked the being involved in, in the community and and working, you know, really for the public sector was was a good shift from being in the private sector for for over a decade. So with with my current position, I, I do a lot of project management and in a wide variety of things. Right now, we're trying to put um, solar panels on, you know, a, a good chunk of our city enterprise facilities with the hope of getting ten percent onsite renewable generation. And I am learning there are so many challenges to putting solar panels on roofs. And, you know, for, for a year and a half, it's, it's, it's been not only dealing with contract things, but finding out our roof structure is not sufficient. So now I'm, you know, project managing three re-roofs, which I have zero experience with roofing projects. So now I'm learning all the different materials and, and my chemistry degree comes to the full boomerang, learning about the benefits of PVC over EPDM and all these different things. Um, but ballasted or unballasted that's the real question <laughs> that that's a good question and we are doing unballasted removing all the rock to get rid of the weight Wait. to be able to put solar panels instead um so it, it, it's a lot of again project management but also a lot of team building you know i in my year and a half of the city I, I probably know over 400 people now at the city you know and just having to be on constant calls or going between our various buildings but um, I'd say some of my favorite times at my position, though, is interfacing with our sustainability office. Um, the, the city's really blessed to have, you know, not just one person in sustainability, but have a team of five people, you know, working on different initiatives. So um, recently we've been focusing on how does, how is the city going to go, you know, fully carbon neutral well ahead of schedule? You know, we're trying to be for city enterprise. 100% renewable in the next year by 2023, but for the greater community, 100% renewable for electricity by 2030. So we've been doing community stakeholder meetings, having discussions, things like that. So it, it, it's fun to see a shift towards more of being on the policy side and how you can influence change on a, on a greater level than just customer by customer, which is where a lot of my history was. I greatly enjoyed that time doing energy audits for commercial industrial customers, working through strategic energy management. Um, and it, it was fun getting to work with utilities throughout the state and realizing that people both in the urban and rural areas are dealing with the same energy challenges and we just have to find different strategies for how to help, help overcome them. So that's a little bit more about my background and where I'm at today.
Great, thank you. Chris, you sound like the person who's running stuff and is in charge. You sound the part, you look the part. It's very impressive. It's it's admirable, I gotta say. Um, right now, the Maddie asks, where are you now? I'm on Elm Street, approximately one block from the Morris Fire Department. Good for me, as I mentioned earlier, I am a big fan of the Morris Fireside, the Firefighter Theme Burger Restaurant. Um, so I am actively here, right, in this community that we all went to college in. Um, and I try to frame what I'm doing less around career and job, right? So what I'm doing is I am just driving the bus around town. Yes, the city does pay me, but I'm driving around town and making sure people get where they need to go and chatting with my neighbors and with my friends and seeing how everybody's doing, right? I view it as really a, a care work, um, really as a service. That's what it is, right? And so part of what I'm doing is continuing to try and build community through this pandemic, um, through becoming a mid 20 year old and confused about where I am. Um, I'm here with the people. I'm also doing other job things, right? So like I said, I work for the city as a bus driver. I also work for the county as the coordinator for the organics recycling program. And that is funded through a grant. And so the county has a bunch of money from the NPCA to get our organics recycling program started up. And so actively when I go to work, like I did this morning, um, I'm doing things like ordering supplies uh, and gear to hand out to our local businesses. I am researching other local or other smaller compost programs in surrounding counties, right? I'm coordinating with our waste hauler here in town to make sure that everybody who wants to do organic recycling has a cart outside of their office, right? I'm connecting with community members who want to do organics recycling at home and teaching them about how the process works and answering questions and kind of just the if somebody wants to do organics recycling in Stevens County, they got to find me, right? So I'm doing whatever needs to happen in order for organics recycling to function in our community. And a lot of that, um, as both Marcus and Chris have mentioned, is about people, right? And both you, Maddie, you also mentioned it. It's about people. And so whether that be stopping by the Welcome Center this morning, I saw Troy to drop off some compostable bags and talk about how we can do organics recycling at community meals. It's less about I need to make sure we can organic recycle at community meals and I need to make sure people have signs. It's more about what do the folks in our community need in order to succeed at their goals, right? And so whether that be they need a ride to the hospital to the doctor appointment, or maybe they need a recycling sign in Spanish, right? That's what we're doing is we're making it happen. We're figuring out, uh, we're working with our neighbors. Um, I suppose another thing well, yeah, I'm going to say it. another thing I'm currently working on is I operate the snowball saloon, which is the snow fort outside of my house that we built um, with our neighbor kids and with our friends. And once again, it's it's not just about I have a job and that's what I do. It's I am a person and I live in this community. How do I intertangle my webs of being right? Um, the amount of people who ride the bus who know that this is where I live and that's the snowball saloon and they can come by anytime is a, is a large number, right? The guy who runs our waste hauling service respects the snowball saloon, the garbage truck owner and coordinator. Um, he thinks it's a great idea. He recently gave me a baseball hat with their company logo on it, right? It's about building those connections and those networks so that when we do the good work, we can do it together and we can have fun doing it. Um, yeah, so I'm I'm driving a bus. I'm, I always tell people I'm driving a bus, I'm digging through trash, or I'm hanging out in the Snowball Saloon. I should mention that sustainability things are happening, not just countywide, but citywide, as our friend Griffin, who I think is also on this call, is a, the city of Morris sustainability coordinator and is working to get an electric transit bus. So not only will I be digging through trash and organics recycling, but hopefully through the work of years and years and many people, um, and especially Griffin, writing grant funding and coordinating with MnDOT, um, will be driving an electric bus too, right? So it's about that community connection. It's about, sure, SID's coordinating an organics program. SID's also driving the electric bus and getting people to the hospital where they need to go, right? And charging the electric bus with the solar panels that are going to be on the city buildings. It's that integrated approach to, I am a person who works. I'm a person who plays. I'm a person who eats. How can we build a sustainable community that welcomes 
joy and connection and I want to say intentionality, right? We want to work to be good so that we can feel the goodness of it, right? So that's what I'm doing. I'm existing in my community, working, hanging out with my dog, playing in the snowball saloon, driving an electric bus, hopefully within the next year or two. So awesome. Well, thank you for sharing all of all of your um, current uh, what's going on in your lives. Um, so we still have some time left. Um, I just have one more question. Um, just kind of what would you have liked to know as a college student? Um, and what do you want current Morris students to know? Uh, that's great. I mean, I think I, I alluded to one of these things, which is, you know, you don't have to be in a rush. Uh, you should enjoy your experience in college. It only happens once and maybe twice. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, I think like what's interesting is, um, you know, so I spent five years in this office in a planner role. I provided a lot of technical assistance to a lot of people. I've never been the actual expert on things, which is fine, um, and helping coordinate people and developing strategy and all those things. And now I'm in this director role. Uh, what's interesting is, you know, I get to be a tireless advocate for something I'm passionate about. I don't do the work <laughs> anymore, right? Like the great work that Chris does. Um, I get to talk to Chris, <laughs> right? I don't, but I do. I get to talk to our corollaries, Chris, and talk about, um, you know, the status of things and then, you know, pay invoices, right? Um, and I get to go testify to the legislature and talk about funding and these things. Um, so it's, so I would say in your career, um, and that's okay, you know, like somehow I've grifted my way to this role in the sense that like, I just was, I've always been in the interstitial, the like interstitial space between the science and the policy. And that's okay um, if you don't feel like you fit in or you have the right exact skills, someday something will fit right. Do you know what I mean? Just like keep looking. Mm -hmm. Your first job's not forever. That's great advice. Thank you. Um, I, I think Marcus had some some great advice there. I, I would say get get as involved as you feel like you can take on without overwhelming yourself. You know, I think some people really go to a pretty, a pretty short. Uh, a pretty small, I guess, class load. And if that's what you feel like you can handle, great. But if you have the ability to take on another course in an area well outside what you're comfortable with, do it. It's a great way to meet new friends, learn new skills, um, see if that's an area you're, you're passionate about. Um, I would also just say getting a good degree, I, I mean, Morris, no matter what degree you have, it will serve you very well. But I think there's a, a huge community side. I mean, that's been a very frequent dis discussion on all this. And I would say a, a lot of where my career has, the direction for my career, as well as the opportunities in my career, where they've come up is, is through building community, building relationships and, and, and networking. So I, I can't stress enough the importance. And I guess the, adv the advice I, I, I would give to everyone is, is make sure you're, you're reaching out, get to know your professors, get to know about different opportunities, and, and don't be afraid to just shoot emails to alumni. You know, if a student shot me an email saying, hey, I'm interested in sustainability work, how, how'd you get here or what kind of opportunities? I mean, I, I had somebody reach out to me recently saying, do you know of any opportunities? And I think everyone in sustainability is trying to hook each other up with, with opportunities that are a good fit for them. So you might not feel like every position is a perfect fit for your skill set, but if you wanna do sustainability work, there is a job or a position for everyone with every different skill set. I'm convinced, um, and and there's not one perfect skill set. You know, you need such a a good diversity of people. You need people that um, are good decision makers. You need experts in certain things. Um, 
I need people that help me that are really good with just accounting. I have to look at a lot of invoices and I like when people are able to help run through spreadsheets. So um, that's my two cents. Awesome, thank you. I kind of want to echo on what both of them said about how jobs aren't forever, right? And about how that can be kind of a confusing thing to think about when you're a college student, because most of the people you're interacting with kind of have forever jobs. That's what's written into their job, right? It is tenure track. They're, they are doing that job and that's what they're doing. Um, a lot of people who are running administration in places like that, they're going to, they're going to have that job, right? So to think about the folks who will simply, who are working, and then they're working over here and then they're working over there and how that's a normal flow of life, I think is something I wasn't thinking about when I was in school. People ask you, what do you wanna do? And then you decide that and you do it. It's not, what experiences do you want in your future? What might bring you joy? What might not bring you? It's not flowing, right? It's not back and forth and changing as life is. Um, I'm only 25 and I'm already thinking about how, wow, things have changed in the past couple of years. I'm a baby and things are changing and my brain is confused. So I can't even imagine what the next 10 or 20 or 30 years is gonna be like, right? So I'm, I'm trying to go into it with a, with a flowing mindset, a mindset of things will change. I'm in transition. I'm still alive and living it as we speak, right? Um, and I don't think I was thinking about that in school. It was more of make the decision and do it as opposed to you can just exist. So I would encourage you uh, college students currently and people in general currently to just exist, right? And to, if you're in school or if you're someone who's trying to do learning, find the learning that brings you joy and then hang on to that, right? For me, it was biology. I liked thinking about systems. Systems led me to sustainability. Sustainability leads me to community and to people. And that's where I'm finding my joy, right? Um, life isn't work. Life is other things as well as work. And I think college and school and the education system is training us to do work, right? It can also be training us to do other things. And I think that's what a lot of us get out of Morris is, wow. I'm not Morris sure Morris is, is training people to do work. <laughs> yeah, Morris is training people to exist as humans. Um, we're hanging out, right? The education <laughs> system's trying to get you to do a job. I mean, a Morris lot of homework. Says, Come and hang out on the prairie, right? Um, and so I think my advice as well as my thoughts, both to myself and to other people are, we should think about who we are and where we want to exist and understand that that will be flowing and changing. Um, and if what you're seeking out is X for me, I think I'm seeking out joy, right? I think that's what I'm going for. Um, where am I gonna find that? Looking for that, creating that. Uh, it can be through work. It can be through talking about trash. It can be through driving the bus. It can be through the snowball saloon, right? Um, I wish I would have, and I guess I kind of did. I wish I knew more people who came out of school with a well-rounded view of, I am a person, not I am needing a job, right? Because we can build community outside of work and we can have jobs that are just jobs, right? We don't have to have jobs that are careers. Um, maybe I'll drive the bus for the rest of my life. Maybe when I'm 60, I'll be like, remember when I was 24 and driving a bus, right? It, things not being forever is part of, part of their spark. Um, so I say, think about you, think about what you're craving and what you're wanting out of the big wide world. And then know that that will probably change. And that's great. It's not even okay. It's great. It's fantastic. What a lovely world we can live in where things are flexible and flowing. Um, I'm thankful for Morris for that reason. It's here's some people, here's some loving, exist as you are and do what you will. Great. <laughs> awesome. I love that. Well, these are all great pieces of advice. Thank you so much for sharing. I feel like maybe we should make like a poster for our office with all of our alumni wisdom. Um, so I think we're just about out of time. So I'll just thank you for, for joining us today again. Um, again, I know you all have busy schedules, so it means a lot to us that you were able to come talk with us, um, build some community and be intentional about it. Um, 
it's been a pleasure to get to know you all. And I'm thankful that you are willing to share your experiences with us. So, yeah. Thank you, Maddie, for hurting us cats <laughs> and for bringing some people together for conversation. That's part of the good work, right? It's part of the joy and the connection is hurting the cats to connect. Say, hang out, cats. So thank you <laughs> for forcing the cats to hang out. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Thanks for letting me be a part of this. Appreciate it. Have a great night, everyone. Yes, you too. Take care. Mm -hmm.